tuned in to Athletics Double LC yeah, 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 yeah. with Lamar, uh -huh. Lucius, uh -huh. Big League Chu, yeah. and my man Clyde. <laughs> you are about to be schooled in all things track and field. This is experience. Yes, sir. We are talking past, past present, present, future. future. Y'all listen up. Let's go. Hi, people. Welcome back. Uh, we are missing a tile tonight. Um, life is life. And we're learning that now, right? So uh, Sir Lucius is taking care of what he needs to take care of. We'll see him again next week, probably. Um, for those of you who were on the PACA call last night, we ain't letting Brooks bully us into nothing. Nothing, I said. So, huh. But anyhow, uh, Governor, how are you today, sir? Oh, fabulous. Um, I am in wonderful Birmingham, Alabama, and um, we start our conference championships, the Conference USA Championships on Saturday. And um, so we have our pre-meet tomorrow. We got to wait for the SWAC to get their business over with. They have now condensed it into one day, so that will be fun. And, uh, and then we get started on Saturday. So just uh, final preparations over here. Good stuff. Best wishes, far marks, fast times, high jumps, stuff for you guys. Thank you, thank you. Of course. Clyde, how are you today, sir? Well, the governor alluded to it. As you see, I am, I am in my swack apparel, <laughs> Alabama State Hornets. We're well, staying at a hotel. We are at a hotel. in the crew. Get it done. Swack, uh, 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 swack administrators, please <laughs> don't screw up the condensed schedule. Seed the heats, please. And good luck to all. <laughs> good luck to all. Last but not least, Lamar, the inventor Huffins. How we doing? Uh, we're good. We're good. Uh, I've been pensive today. Been been really trying to uh, lean in to uh, our Black history education uh, of, of our, our viewers because they have been giving me feedback that has been inspiring. So uh, I don't want to disappoint, but uh, feeling pretty good, to be honest, feeling pretty good. Good answer, good answer, good answer, good answer. <laughs> I just want to say for the record, uh, and I think this definitely falls upon you. I think you should, you should, you should apply. You should send us in as a five-person family for Family Feud and see if they let us on. Because I think we would dominate. Oh my I am, gosh! I yes. am, I am co-signing that. I think okay, if I'll you send us out. in as the Athletics LLC family, we will dominate. Oh my gosh! Somebody send this to the network or Steve Harvey or whoever does those things. What if we do podcast versus podcast? Yes. And we'll challenge anybody. <laughs> oh my gosh. I'm, I'm going to do that. I'm we need to go against out. Pat McAfee and, and the squad. What? Oh, see, so I'm not going to say it, but <laughs> we could definitely go to head to head with some of that. <laughs> oh, stop it. Okay. Listen, we are not, we are not going to feast on low hanging fruit tonight. Okay. Okay. Moving on. Let's go. All right. <laughs> I know. <laughs> keep pushing, keep pushing. Um, <coughs> excuse me. I'm choking on my own spit after that one. Um, let's start the show. Let's start the show with track is back. And, uh, man, as predicted, oh, man. <laughs> the, the, the weekend of the regular season, right? <laughs> Yeah, and yes. it's kind of like, like just going through t and whatnot. Honestly, I fell asleep going through t because there was just so much to like comprehend and digest and whatnot. Like, it's not even conference championships and it's not even nationals yet. Like, holy crap. I mean, we'll, we'll get to the obvious <laughs> ones, but if I'm being honest, like the most impressive while also being shocking thing that I saw this weekend Iowa men's four by four with the 302 running Florida to the wire, Joey Woody and the crew. That was an amazing performance. A lot of this, these other things are, are from people that we expect to do what they're doing right now. And, but that one right there, when I saw that one, I was like, oh, and I've watched that video a few times. I was thoroughly impressed with that one. 
Oh, but no, Clyde, don't you know the Big Ten can't only run the four by four at Spire on the giant track? That's what somebody told me, but you know. So, so here's, what I'm gonna, here's what I'm going to say. Based on, based on all the slander that has been given the Big Ten for running at the Spire, right? If, if what they're saying is true, then we should expect Iowa to run 259 at Big Tens, right? If the big track is that much better, than, than the banked ovals, right? Then Iowa should, should crank out this 259 hella easy. Hey, and we should be good. It's 2022. Anything's possible. I mean, it is. Because <laughs> Iowa ran 302. So. But, it, Jesus. But, listen, in, in, the, in the 400, there was so much from this weekend, right? I think we would do best to pick an event to gush over. You know what I mean? Because there was so many... <laughs> That's even hard just figuring that out. Oh, no. Just, oh. Well, let me ask I'll this question. It. I was just going to th just throw this one comment out to get us sparked, right? What do you have to run in the women's hurdles? Like, as a college coach, what do you have? What does your girl have to, your, your, your young lady have to run in the women's hurdles for you to feel confident that she's in the meet? What, eight flat? Uh, like eight double zero? Yeah, oh, <laughs> oh, five, I feel good. I feel good right? at oh, five which, by the way, is number 10. Exactly. 05 is number 10 right now. <laughs> so, you know, it, it might end up being eight flat. I mean, listen, Miss Raina Jones of UCF is, what, a 1260 hurdler? She's at 801, and she ain't in the top five. Okay, so it's a little nutty right now in the women's hurdles. I mean, yeah. and, and props to, since we're talking about that, you know, the, the top of the list was rewritten this week. So props to Miss Aaliyah Armstrong for her 781. Props to Miss Paula Salmon at AT for her 783. Like in what world are you 783 and not leading the NCAA halfway through? Sir, the <laughs> 780, 786, and you're third. Third. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> crazy, crazy. So, you know, there's a lot going on this weekend. Um let me let me get to the 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 real re rewriting of the list this week. <laughs> the men's 400, one, two, three, oh, four, no, five, and six. One? <laughs> one, two, three, four, five, six, eight, and nine. All from past this past weekend. Yeah. <laughs> it's like Oprah was at the meet. You get a 45. You get a 45. You get a 45. Insane. So let, let me I mean, ask y'all. Let me ask y'all about the men's 400. Let me ask y'all this. Are we more impressed with Randolph Ross and his leading 44-83 or the fact that the Gators have three of the top seven? Well, you, you took my take, so you know my answer. My answer no, I'm is... Asking. I... Well, well, so my answer is this. Only one other time as a team, as a college team, had three active 45-second guys. Uh, it was the USC squad that, that broke the world record. There you go. And, and they had four. Because the fourth one was like 45. It was, wasn't Zach, Zach Shinnick like 45, 99 or 98? He might have been that year. Yeah, we have to look that way. Yes. Yeah. But, but the, fact that, the fact that the Gators just slid three 45-second guys in there very casually. Like nobody's paying attention to the fact that that was champion Allison's opener in a Gator uniform. <clears throat> that it was that ran the four by four ran the four by four two weeks ago ran his first open this past weekend dropped to 45 like we good appreciate it <laughs> i'm i'm still trying to understand what i witnessed in that 400 race when randolph ross and uh mr godwin connected and yeah. they kind yeah. of looked at each other and they had a moment you know it was like <laughs> kind of a moment yeah and then yeah. Mr. Godwin said, you know what? Hey, go right ahead. Take <laughs> <laughs> I mean, right? Right? <laughs> right? And then he proceeds to run 44. And I'm just like, what? Yeah, with the stoppage. It was as if he was rabbiting the race. We said this. Like, it was as if he was rabbiting the race, was going to pull off. I'm like, oh, no, I'm going to keep going. I'm going to keep yeah. going. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, so, oh. uh, I mean... You know, if you were in the building that day and had a better angle than the one that is available on YouTube, somebody please let us know because I don't know if Mr. Godwin can run 44 8, 
But what I know is he <clears throat> thoroughly took the break yes. from Mr. Ross yes. and then just looked to his left and passed him on through. Like, I didn't get that. <laughs> I didn't understand. So maybe it was Very a bad true. angle. Maybe there's something there that, you know, we can't see. Somebody let me know what happened. <laughs> um, well, well, I, I want to just, I think we're going to stay in the men and then we'll go back to the women. I'm going to say this because Sir Lucius would want me to say this because he's been talking about it for a week. At the beginning of this year, I said, after week one, I said, it's going to take 661 or faster to make the men 60. And he at the time, because he thinks like a normal human being, as we all do, he's like, nah, it's not going to take that fast. It'll be 63 or 64. Those are the fast years. It's like, okay. So let me just help the rest of the world. <laughs> Currently, there are three people tied for 16th at 662. Yeah. So it is it is already 661 to get in the meet. Now let That's me tell right. you, two of the people, er, all three people tied at 662 are in the SEC. Yeah. I'm gonna bet that none of them leave the SEC at 662. <laughs> It's a solid right? bet. It's a solid bet. Right? History says history says not. So if that is the case, right? Let's be clear. That puts the four six sixty ones on the bubble. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like if enough shenanigans go on next week, right? Because look, the next three guys are in the SEC, and then you got an A and T guy, Alcorn State guy, right? Youngtown, Youngstown State, Virginia Tech, Florida State. So if Virginia Tech and a Florida State guy are 663, they're in the same conference, right? The point is, if enough shenanigans go down, folks, it could get to 660. Yeah, we're not that far away from 660 at all. <laughs> Matthew Bowling is ninth at 660. Right. And then there's one, two, three, four, five at 61. <laughs> Somewhat, listen. <clears throat> My way too early jacked up prediction. Someone is going to run 661 and not get into the national meet on tiebreakers. Oh, that that that's very likely. That is very likely. that's I brutal. Will I will definitely concur. <laughs> that because is they will they brutal. will run faster. They're gonna run because look, 60 is in the SEC, 61 is in the SEC, 61 and 61 are both in the Big Ten. Then another 62, 62, and 62 are all in the SEC. Folks, there's going to be a whole right. lot of six. There's going to be a whole lot of six fifty somethings in the prelims at the SECs because <laughs> ain't nobody trying to get left home. Hey, it, it's, it's a cold game in the short sprints right now. <laughs> it is a cold game. Um, what you got, Governor? What's your, what's your event and what's your... for tonight on the men's side? Well, um, I mean, I'd be remiss if I didn't bring up the new NCAA record in the 200, uh, Ms. Steiner. Um, <laughs> and I've watched that race, I don't know how many times. And <clears throat> good Lord, uh, it just looked, it looks like there's more. <laughs> it looks like there's more there. Um, yeah. And that's, that's on a scary level. I, I sent... You know, there's a reason why I sent that 1992 video, um, because, yeah. you know, ultimately, I think, you know, we're, we're starting to see these young athletes kind of step out of what they should be doing. And they're like, no, I'm, I'm just going to do what I do. And, and it's just been week to week. We've been seeing these numbers. I mean, I and mean, I think everybody kind of knew after Abby ran that PB in the uh, in the 60 meters mm -hmm. that something stupid was about to happen, you know. So, um, I mean, she it, did also split 50 point on their 327. Oh yeah, four by four. Oh yeah, oh yeah. So that that was a very impressive uh, performance there, um, and I think you know we've got there's again. We still have SECs to go and nationals. Well, so, so you know, buckle what? up. 
as it pertains to Miss Steiner, and, and I really hope I'm wrong about this. Um, the last, so Bianca Knight did set that record at nationals, which I believe was at Arkansas. Yeah. Um, and then the, the last time it was challenged, um, you know, was in, uh, was it New Mexico? And then there was a DQ by one of the Oregon girls. Deja, Deja. Deja, yeah. you're right. Yeah. The, the point is this. I would, I would sit here and predict that Abby Steiner could break the 200 meter indoor world record, except the meets in Birmingham. She just did this a month before the championship. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I, I, you know, wherever SECs is in two weeks, it's at A and M, um, isn't it? At A and M, I think S I think SEC is at A and M. I'm not sure, I'm not sure where it is, but I feel like I feel like time wise, we'll probably see the best version of Abby at SECs because the Birmingham track is just not high enough of a bank to yeah. to generate that kind of time. But she is, I mean, she's the best we've seen at this level by far at that event. It's and there is more there. There really it's at, is. It's so, at AM. So so staying in the 200, let me let me drop this small nugget on the, the on well, I know where viewers. you're going with this one. I know where you're <laughs> going two, with this one. It's a it's a two-part. Part A. Do you guys remember when 2080 was a lock? Like if you ran 2080, you could book your flight. Yeah, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. 2080 is literally 16th. Yeah. Currently. Now, now, A, that's ridiculous. B, 2081 goes to Kentucky and is running in the SEC meet. But C, which brings me to where you knew I was going, it also pertains to what we were talking about earlier in the 60s. Um, <clears throat> a certain uh, Olympian is making his collegiate season debut this weekend at altitude at texas tech so um yeah yeah i i gotta believe that if mr fombole runs a 60 and mr fombole runs a 200 that those um those 661s are in trouble and that 2080 is for sure off the bubble and on the outside looking in because Look, i think we all agree that, that, big joe. that gentleman right yeah. everybody forgot about big joe and when that man goes to Texas Tech and, and opens the season at like 652 in 2020, it, <laughs> none of us will be surprised, right? But wait, <laughs> I, I want to stay in the 200 meter lane because much like we talked about the Florida compilation, um, in, the, in the women's 200, uh, Texas has four of the top 10. Yes. And wait a minute. Yeah, four, one, two, three, four of the top 10 and six of the top 13. <laughs> yeah. Got half the field. They got half the, they got half, they, well, if you think about it, if, if the meet was to happen now, right, they got six of 16. Yeah. They, they got, they, they got 40%. Look, damn that. If you got six out of 16, I'm calling it half the damn field. <laughs> <laughs> it's just by yeah. default, you get the extra 10%. Like, that's why, yeah. I, you know. Yeah. So, you know, Texas seems uh, quite motivated this year. And that's a, I, I don't know if all six are going to, you know, contest the event. Because, I mean, my God, like 13, they're all in the top 13. Mm -hmm. So it's not wild to say they could take six of the eight spots in the final. Like that. No. Like that's crazy. No. <laughs> not at all. Yeah, it's, uh, it's wild. So can we, um, are we ready to coronate um, a certain Miss Alexis Holmes? Hey. She's hey. back, isn't she? With a bullet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's pretty, pretty fantastic. Um, yeah. So, and so, spent, so, the year, spent the year injured last year and, and uh, but we, we've all known what she could do from she was at Penn State but to drop 5127 and then turn around. What did she split on the four by four? Does anyone know? I do not. But you, you can find I it. I don't know. 
That was pretty know, uh, impressive as well. I know they ran 320 stupid. <laughs> <laughs> but but here's what I'm gonna say. As as Chu is looking this up, right? I I believe I believe Kentucky leads the country at 327, right? Yes, yes. That was nowhere near the most impressive thing that happened in the women's four by four this weekend. Because Arkansas's B team ran 332. Yes. And in the in the next heat, their A team ran 328. <laughs> that all did. I happen. just I, I want everybody to understand this. They ran out a relay team that would currently be in the meet yes. at 332. Yes. And all four of those girls were running for two alternate spots yep. right. on the A team That's just right. to go to nationals and get the gear because they won't get to run. <laughs> right. Like, <laughs> hello? That's right. What? In tarnation. <laughs> it's insane. The, the women's 400 was one of those events for the weekend, right? Uh, what am I looking at? Three four, five, six, eight of the top 11 came from this past weekend. Yes. Um, I, I was in New Mexico and watched Miss Cherokee Young run an incredibly smooth 51-3. Mm -hmm. And that, mm -hmm. you know, at the moment was number one in the country. And I think like 45 minutes later, <laughs> you get the report of Alexis Holmes with her 51-27. So listen, the unicorn is gone. Mo is gone, but the 400 yeah. is not soft. Yep. The 400 is ready to roll. And I and I feel like we still have some debuts or, or some improvements coming over the next two weeks. I mean, look, th this will speak to it all, right? <clears throat> Talitha Diggs and uh, and Taylor Manson, who's an Olympian, hello? They opened up two weeks ago, I think it was two weeks ago, and ran 52 flat and 52 58 in the meet for sure. Mm -hmm. Yes. Taylor Manson is currently 16th at 5258. <laughs> That's right. So tied with tied with a P, a lifetime PB indoors by Paris Peoples from Arkansas at 5258. And it was funny because when Paris ran that, because I was, you know, I was involved in the recruitment of her bit way back in the day, right? When Paris ran that, I was like super juiced for her, like she PR. She's cause she was like the third best girl that came in in her recruiting class, right? You know, she's catching these girls, right? Yeah. Next heat her two teammates bop bop and I was like bro what is going on like 52 in the middle is one of them you're going to the meet times no yeah, shot bro. Not no anymore. shot <laughs> no mm -hmm. shot 52 double zero indoors is currently seventh now we we often get we often get accused of missing our our longer compatriots oh man Mm. Um, mm -hmm. We all we all predicted a big distance weekend, right? The men's 800, <laughs> one through seven, and then well, eight, uh, 10 through 17. Yes. All from this past weekend. All from this um, weekend. Miss uh standing at the at the top with the young man from Texas Tech at 145.99. Yep. Listen, I'm gonna say yeah. this without being disrespectful the men's 800 was spectacular this weekend but it literally doesn't hold a candle to the women's i mean how I'm do gonna, you how do you explain? i'm gonna give you a time and i want you to guess where this is on the list 204 56 reminder this is under a roof and two weeks before the conference meets 204 56 where, where is where that it on the is list? i know where it is because yeah. i was looking at it yeah it, 20 20. 20. It's 20. 20. And let's be clear. 20403 is 10. There's 10 people within half a second at 204. Yeah. yeah. Right? So you already know this. Half of them are going to run faster because they're like, I'm not getting left out. By, by a tenth of a second. By a tenth tenth exactly. Of a <laughs> so that, so 20391 that is ninth. You better go run somewhere. Oh, yeah. Because <laughs> they coming for you. Oh, yeah. 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 The eight, the 800s may have done the biggest explosion of any event this week. Mm -hmm. The men's and women's eights combined went just absolutely nuts. Hey, and we, we talked about this young lady earlier in the year. And nobody knew who she was. I'd say most people still don't know who she is. But when we brought up Emily McKay from uh, from Binghamton mm -hmm. in the beginning of the year, it was, oh, that's cool. 
you know, nice story. No, no, no. She's still number one. Yeah. <laughs> She's still number one. <laughs> Just ran four minutes, 30, 90, 30, four minutes, 30 in the mile, yeah. 94. Yeah. So anybody that thought that was like a small school situation that wasn't going to hold up, oh, she's going to hold up. She, she said, watch this. It. <laughs> watch. <clears throat> I mean, I mean top quietly 50. as it kept, 4, 435 is 16. Just, just a, crazy. It's nuts. Crazy. And, I mean, and now, you know, we had another national record. Yes, we did. Uh, besides the 2027? I mean, 20, yes. 2027, Jesus. Besides 22, 22, 27? Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, well, yeah. Well, I, I well, want to see, sir. I want to see if you can, if you can guess it. Another Distance. national record. Um, I I, what I is this, Drew? Come on, it's Black it's, History Month. <laughs> yeah, Notre Dame. Did it last year. Yard and the goose. Yeah. Oh, Nagoose is, is loose. Yes, he did. 738.13 in the 3K, uh -huh. which personally I can't even wrap my head around because that world makes my head hurt. But <laughs> I watched it, it was amazing. <laughs> and he's, okay. He's two seconds better than the list. <laughs> Wait. Okay. Listen, I, 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 I'm sorry to our fandom, right? Like, Usually I'm all over these kind of things, but I just noticed this. The women's 5K leader is 12 seconds better than everybody else mm -hmm. on the list. Yeah, no, we was getting to that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Indeed. look, you, 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 we, know, we know our girl at BYU is out there coaching, <laughs> doing her thing, but... Courtney Waymint. I'm assuming Wayment. that's how we say her. Courtney Wayman, Waymint has ran 15, 15, 46, and second place on the list from another dominant defense of uh, distance power yes. from NC State. 15, 15 27. 27. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I'm just going to tell you this. When I was the head coach at a power five school, I had a guy on my team that ran 15, 15, and I didn't cut him. <laughs> I wouldn't cut him right now either. Um, had, he been, had he been on the same team with her, I, he would have been cut on general principle. Like, listen. Hey, so, I mean, listen, <laughs> Dil has been getting it done for a long time, but, you know, yeah. props to Dil Taylor at BYU. Like, that's a, that's a hell of a squad. 12 seconds? That's a hell of a squad. So, next question is... What's the over under that Mr. Cunningham dips under 740 this year? Okay, wait, it's a better over under. Okay. And 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 at this point, I'm gonna be respectful to Mr. Cunningham and ask this question. Okay. What is Grant Holloway's collegiate record? There we go. In the 60 hurdles. Uh 734 or 735. I feel like it was 36. but that's the that's the question at this point right i mean trey just ran 42 a month before nationals there there the the bank in birmingham doesn't affect the sprint hurdles nope okay the straightaway is very fast and there's no running up the bank trey has a shot at that record and if you really think about it that's an insane thing to even contemplate. Yes. Given who yeah. Grant is and was in college. Yeah. Like Trey has a shot. Do well, I think you, it? No. you read the tweet? The, the last person to beat him indoors was Trey. Touche. <laughs> like 17 years ago, but it was the last person to beat him. But but I'm just wow. saying, like, that's that's one of the collegiate records where it's like, oh, well, that's gonna be around for a minute. <laughs> and and Trey is literally. I mean, you, you can't start and stop a stopwatch fast enough, to, you know, in the time that Trey is away from that record. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's right there. 735. Okay. 735. Okay. So that, that makes a difference. If you told me it was 33 or 34, I'd be like, nah, that's not going to happen. 35? It's, it's doable. 
He could do it. <laughs> so I'll, I'll take the over for, for Mr. Cunningham. Yeah, I'll take the over as well, but... I'll like, take the over <laughs> mainly. It's not a disrespect to, to Trey. I don't think any... I don't think... Now, look, we, we did have a couple youngins run 750-something this weekend, but mm -hmm. I don't think anybody's going to be close enough to push him. We got to remember, Grant had Daniel. Yes. Okay, and, and that's, that's a really interesting conversation, right? And again, I'm, I don't say this disrespectfully. The knock on Trey in his career collegiately has been in tight races, he gets tight. Also true, also true. So Grant had Daniel to push him, but that's not Grant. Like Grant, you know, rises in those situations. The fact that Trey's going to probably be out there by himself is why I think he might be able to get it. Yeah, yeah. I'll take the over, but not by a lot. Hey. Not by a lot. But again, the fact that we're even contemplating it because <laughs> that's a great off of the greatness that we witnessed um hello yeah really quick so we don't get beat up by all of our field event people i just i want to share something with y'all really quick well yeah we, we'll, we'll get back to the four by four men's four by four in a minute because that nonsense needs to be addressed as well but the you remember last year when it was like what, three, three guys or four guys indoors over over 19 feet mm -hmm. in the vault indoors, and we were like, mm -hmm. man, this is freakish, and all those guys are gone. Yeah. Uh, there's two back over 19 and another one at 18, 10 and a quarter. <laughs> Just saying. Yep. Um, and then, you know, I don't want to alarm anybody, but the men's shot put, which I mentioned a couple weeks ago, listen, 21 meters indoors for a collegian is epic. The fact that there's two over 21 35, like there's good, like that there's, there is going to be a tightly contested national championship in the shot put well over 21 meters is insane. Well, pretty, yeah, it's pretty those insane. Marks have, those marks have been up there. I mean, Turner did that in, in like, Oh, his opener in January. Oh, yeah, no question. But but not just that. The young man from Texas threw like 21, 30 something high this yeah. weekend. This like he has a backup season. mark. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, FYI, the Alexis Holmes, if it's listed as they ran it, she ran 50.83. Wow. If, did she run the, the anchor? Yeah, she ran the anchor. Yeah. Yeah. So 50.83. Do they, who, where do they run Abby? This is at Clemson. No, no. Two. Where, what leg does she run? Two, right? Steiner. I assume it's two if it's listed as is. Yeah. It should be 50 sense. point something. 50.71. Oh, yeah. yeah. That, that'd be, that'd be Steiner. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, okay. The men's four by four, because I know Huff can <laughs> get there. First of all, you just got to go watch the tape. So don't just look at the marks and see Florida at 302.09 and Iowa at 302.40, because that was amazing. By the way, Arkansas 303.1, right? Go Which, watch but, the video. Let's, let's be clear. Arkansas's 303.1 is the most heroic thing that happened this weekend, because I don't think any of us, and we all love Trek, I don't think any of us can name Arkansas's best quarter pilot. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know. They, they were just rolling. But go watch the video. Florida did something very un-Florida, un-Gator. Mm -hmm. They had a horrible pass from three to four. Yep. Horrible. So don't get it twisted. That that handoff threw away a 301. <laughs> that was a 301 by Florida. Yep. <laughs> it's and, and for me, if, if we all remember the race from last year, where Georgia was out there with two legs. They're currently sitting number five at 304.07. They got a much more complete team this year, but they're outside of the real race, right? Like right now, A&T is in the race at 303.39. They're in the fast section. Georgia's yeah. sitting outside of it. So the SEC meet coming up is going to be bananas <laughs> because they're just trying to get into the fast section. 
<laughs> yes. I, right. I just want to say this for the record. In what world is what in what world is ANT's 303 the, the slow team in the fast lane? <laughs> no, that that's the point, right? Because respectfully, oh, a and doesn't have a conference where they're gonna, you know, be challenged. Right, so right. by the end of next weekend, a and gonna be probably in the slow section. I mean, they're gonna be out there running it's by themselves. Completely, it's it's feasible because it look, feasible. Florida's number one, Arkansas's two, Georgia SEC wise. Florida's number one, Arkansas's number three, Georgia's five, Tennessee is six, A and M is seven, and Kentucky is nine. So, <laughs> look, but, yes. where's everybody else playing? Like A and T could legit get bumped out of the fast section at NCAA's. That's wild. Yeah, well, here, I got one for you. You just, just looking at the list the way you looked at it, I want you to let this wash over you. For sure, somebody is going to make the NCAA meet in the 4 by 4 that's not in the fast section of their own conference. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, yeah, that's going to happen. That, that's going to happen. And you're just like, what? Where are we? <laughs> the, 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 the bubble, because you got to look at it, right? The bubble... The, the extra teams don't count. So Iowa B, Iowa C. Alabama is on the bubble at 12 at 305.75. <laughs> this is indoors, folks. The championships. Right. This is indoors, folks. So can, can, we not, can we not just pause for a second and just think about if you're outside of this world, right, and you're talking to a recruit, and you're telling them, hey, um, to go to the meet, we would have to run 305. Do you know what four legs, what those four legs would have to run to run 305, right? <laughs> this, this is what we have to, these are the conversations that we're going to have to have, you know, a female <laughs> hurdler. You have to run eight, 10 or better. <laughs> What? Right. Listen, so don't if, be asking if, me for full scholarships. Yeah! Exactly. If, exactly. If you're if you're Chris Johnson and you're out recruiting, right? You're gonna tell a 53 flat girl you are the fastest girl on the C team. On the C team, yes. Yeah. Yes. That's where we're at, folks. That's where we're at. The levels, That's where we're at. The levels have gone up. And they're not going anywhere. It's just, it is what it is. Yeah, it's not a COVID freak anymore. Like, no, this no, is no. normal. This is normal. <laughs> what's, what's next, too? Because we can, we can keep doing it. I know, right? <laughs> um, so the one we're going to slide into the DMs. Marcel, <laughs> Marcel Jacobs. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. I mean, Mark, give that pretty boy. Jacobs? Oh, the, the we're, we're gonna we're gonna let the light skinned kid come in for a second. <laughs> is he here to stay, or is he done? Today he ran fifty. Mm -hmm. So Are we I want to go. I want I want to throw a shot in there first. Okay. Shout out to uh, to mix parenting and and having dual citizenship. Because that young man was born in the United States. And I'm going to say this and feel very confident in it. Had he stayed in the U.S. and run in the U.S., we might literally have never have seen him because he was a very late bloomer and it took him a long time to get to where he's at. And in the U.S., he wouldn't have had support or shoe contract and, or anything. And he probably would have quit. And he was a long jumper. That's yes, where he, he was. was. That's right. Yes. Yes, he was. A decent so, long jumper. Yeah, I mean a good a good one, just not a great one. Exactly. So so, exactly. so since since Chu with her jokes could <laughs> could could technically have made this confusing for the audience. Okay. We're we're asking about Lamont Marcel Jacobs, the hundred meter Olympic champion. Yes. Is he is he a one hit wonder flash in the pan, or is he here to stay? <laughs> yeah. Well, that is the so question I wanted to pose to my colleagues. Before we before we dive in, the, the, by one hit wonder, are we? If he wins a medal, 
does that count? Or yeah. are we saying like, okay, so so like meaning if he never wins another gold medal, but he wins other medals or wins medals another medal. medal, then we're then we're good. Yes, sir. Medal. We don't we don't we don't disrespect medalists on the LLC. <laughs> well, thank God. <laughs> we disrespect uh, the non-medalists, though, for sure. <laughs> wow. Uh, wow. Governor, would you like to go first? <laughs> um. Okay. Uh. All right, and I'm, I'm gonna base this on what I'm seeing, okay? I am seeing the full-fledged world athletics <laughs> machine in, 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 its, in all its glory right now. And because let's, let's be honest, and let's call it what it is. When was the last time we've had a European, and I don't care, what, how many, you know, how many points it took to get to there, right? How many times has a European won the 100 meters at the Olympic Games, okay? So if you start there, all right, they are going to milk this for all it's worth, okay? Mm -hmm. And he's already been rolled out in Europe, right? And he is winning races, right? And he's taking on seemingly all challengers, all, all athletes that choose to run on that circuit, the indoor circuit that, you know, I mean, let, let's put it this way. If you took those athletes and ran them in the NCAA, <laughs> okay, what, what are we talking about here? Okay, so he will be protected. I think he will be protected all the way up until he can't be protected anymore. And that is just a trend that I've seen. I'm sure uh, Lamar has seen over the years, right? I mean, the idea that these Grand, these Grand Prix meets, these Diamond League meets, reserve a lane for the hometown guy, right? You're, you're a, you're a, an up and comer or whatever, you're, bu you're bumping into the fact that Olympic champion, medalist, world ranking, you know, you go all the way down the list and then you get to the hometown hero who probably has no business in the race, but we got to put him in, right? So all that being said, uh, we will be seeing a lot of this young man, I think. And I think they're going to milk it for all it's worth. Uh, my hope is that the folks that we know are talented enough and should be there and should be on that, should have been on that podium are well, uh, motivated at this point. And I cannot wait to see what happens when, you know, injuries, notwithstanding everything he lines up against the best that the U.S. have to offer in, in the cathedral. So, um, no, I don't think he's a one and done, but I also believe that the machine is at work. Well, I'll definitely go next because I know Papa Petty needs to go last. Um, <laughs> you got what? Worlds this year are in the U.S., Mm -hmm. Worlds next year are in uh, uh, Budapest. Yeah, I believe so. Yes. Uh, then the Olympics are in Paris. Yep. Yep. And then Worlds in twenty five is where. Worlds in twenty five. Um, that's a good question. Let's just say Europe. For, for some reason, I think it's in Asia, but, but I can't remember. So anyway, that's what we're talking about, right? We got worlds, worlds, Olympics, worlds. Yeah. I don't think he's a one and done because I think he's going to win a medal in one of those. Oh, wow. Okay. I, without, and, and if I was going to bet, I would, I... 
akin to the conspiracy theory, which is not really a th- not really a theory; it's a fact that that the governor speaks of. If I was going to bet, he would be most prepared for the Olympics in Paris. But if you're, I'll say this: I do not think he wins a medal this summer. Okay. At, mm. at world championships, a um, couple mm. problems. A couple problems for him. One. Is the biggest problem. World Championships is on U.S. soil, so he has to do he has to do the travel, right? Right. All the Europeans have to live the life that we've lived all of our athletic lives, which is <laughs> you start off in the wrong time zone, and you got to figure that out. So, like, the meet starts off with you doing math that nobody else has to do, right? Big problem number two: we have the defending world champion, so we will have four people. Yes. Yeah. Right. That's a massive. There's only eight lanes. That's a massive problem. And then, my opinion, big problem number three: uh, heavy is the head that wears the crown. And there's at least one, and probably two people who look at that dude as if he's Fugazi. Mind you, <laughs> he ran nine. He ran nine eighty in the Olympics. So I'm definitely not calling him that. Yeah. But what I'm saying yeah. is I know there's at least one and probably two people that will be in that final who will look at that dude like, listen, you are you are Olympic champion for the next 9.72 seconds mm-hmm. when I drop this on your face. <laughs> right. I, like you, you and I both know that there's at least one or two guys that already like every day that they train right now, like. They like Steve Buscemi with the with the lipstick on, like people to kill, <laughs> Marcel <laughs> Jacobs, right? Like, so I, I I don't think there's, in my opinion, I don't I don't think there's much of a shot of him winning a medal this summer. Um, but but you know, like I'm not going to be disrespectful to the cat, like you know, look, I never heard of him before, like for real, for real, before this past year, but he did run 980 in the Olympic final. Yes. Yeah. Right. And it's not like, you know, like th- that doesn't happen by accident. If he ran 980, like in Lausanne, like I don't care, but he ran 980 in round three of the Olympics in the final racing other fast people. So I-, I think he's, I think he's got a very legitimate shot to get more medals over the next four championships, which are all in a row. I Just not think, this one. I think. Well, I don't think it it obviously happened. Every he caught everybody sleeping. Yep. Last year. Mm -hmm. People loosely knew who he was. Nobody was picking him. Nobody thought he was a real threat. No one was paying him any mind. And he just went out there and executed his business flawlessly every time. Mm -hmm. And took the Olympic championship gold. Like he's the gold medalist in the Olympics for all time. Yes. Heavy is, you know, the head that wears the crown. But in this case, I think actually wearing that crown helps him. I will say this. I have been like, when there's an athlete in this sport that catches me by surprise, I go out of my way to pay him a lot more attention or her a lot more attention. Mm-hmm. That dude is extremely technically sound. Mm-hmm. Like you could teach classes off that guy and technically sound people who aren't scared of the biggest moments tend to do really damn well when the lights are on. I don't think he's a flash in the pan. I think he's here to stay. Does he continue to win gold, gold, gold? I don't, I mean, it's too hard, right? Mm -hmm. He's not both. But I think he's going to be on the podium for a while, including this year. I do. Would I pick him to win it? I need to see how the season's playing out. Um, The the travel issue is a great point. And and if you haven't done it as an athlete or done it as a coach, you don't actually understand how jacked up it is. (laughs) But it's a lot. So and that's every great, American will tell you it's worse coming this way. Oh, it's 100% worse coming yes, this way. Yes, it is. Yeah. So, it, it, like, it's, it's horrible to go over where they don't have to compete. But when you come home, you're ruined for a yeah. week. 
Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. So, you know, I, I couldn't tell you who his coach is, but whoever they are, they've done a hell of a job prepping that young man, building that young man, teaching that young man. And I think he gets a medal. I'd say he gets a medal this year. And I think he's going to be on the podium for a while. I just, I like everything I see from that dude. I really do. And, and like I said, it's the post bolt era. There is no dominant force. And so in a, in a place where there's no dominant force, I like, I like his mentality and I love his technical prowess. And I think he's real and I think he's here to stay. It's interesting that you say there's no dominant force. And I, I only, the only reason I say that is that Christian not gotten in trouble. I think everybody pretty much assumed he was the dominant force going into last year. Could have mm -hmm. been, but unprofessionalism and things well, I, like I that. get look, look, we don't have to we don't have to revamp how it happened. I'm just saying yes, he does have to get back to it, right? But if Christian returns to who he was, I think there might actually be a dominant force. But it's going to be interesting. And I, and I, I, this is probably the first time in a long time I'm really going to pay attention to what happens at, at indoor worlds because I think there's that's going to tell us a lot about what's coming. Yeah. Well, that, and that's fair, but because uh, I'm I'm going to get it wrong. Christian's li uh, lifetime best is is it 76 or 78? 76. 76. Okay. Christian has never been like, it's not like he dropped a whole bunch of sevens, right? Like he ran the 76. It's amazing. All time. Great Mark. Right. But if you line up the 76 and the 80, like that's, you know, it's, it's right there. Mm -hmm. It's not, it's not bolt in the fifties. It's not Tyson in the, in the low sixties. Like Christian right now, right now is not, what he was and why would he be it's coming he's coming back and you got to build into it but i'm just, I'm just saying like the, there just hasn't been a dominant force since bolt left and christian could be yeah he has the talent to to be but he ain't been and ain't nobody else who run the sevens done anything when it mattered so <clears throat> i'm just saying jacobs can run sevens he ran 980 in the olympic final he can run the sevens Here's what's wild. I think didn't we count this? They're they're like there's like either nine or ten active American sprinters whose PBs are under nine ninety. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. That insane. that's insane. That's the the all time hundred meter list have drastically changed over the past four or five years as well. Yes. Yeah. Be a nerd, and, and, and I'm telling you, with the Olympic trials and the Olympic Games being obviously on U.S. soil for the trials, but in the same stadium, so where for the first time Americans have familiarity, right, with the track and the setup, yep. for the first time since '96. Yeah, well, not right? even '96 because that. Not even 96, because, you know, they built that thing and it was just for that. Yeah, like, but we... We but had we Oregon had, all the time. Well, but, but I'm saying, in, in, in 96, we had a pre-trials meet, the trials, mm -hmm. and the games. And the games, yeah. Sure, yeah. But I'm just saying, we all at Oregon all the time. <laughs> so, I mean, that's yeah. home for everybody. Like it, it or it not, gonna it's be, It's going to be wild for the Europeans, though, when... when, when <laughs> Especially the fact that they have to go to the West Coast. Nine wow. hour time difference. I mean, nine no, hour that time. Is, that, is a, that is approaching what we went through when we went to Sydney. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, it's three hours yes. short. And I remember this being told there is no way you will never adjust. And I was like, yeah. oh, okay, well, as long as I know that, then <laughs> we're okay. You know, yeah, my I mean, the, the standardized rule of thumb was, is one one day per hour, right? So yeah, so, you, if you <laughs> feel so you nine feel, days, if you've just eaten breakfast and you feel a nap coming on, just go ahead and take it. Okay, all right, <laughs> because you will not get a full night's rest. Yeah, it's just not going to happen, right? I mean, and that's what it was. So, 
So I went up and looked. So can anyone tell me what Christian's top seven times are? Top oh, gee, okay. I'm gonna get it very wrong. I feel so he has the seven. Yes, 76. I, did he I want to say he had a 79 once? Wow. Oh. Hey, yeah. you you've already won, you've already won this challenge. Good job. Okay. okay. <laughs> so the rest are all like. I say the rest are all under 85. The rest are 81, 82, 82 85, 86, 88. Yeah. Now, here's the cold thing about it. When was the last of any of that? 19. Long time ago, bro. <laughs> Long time Long ago. ago. Nine, 19. Last I heard, this is the what have you done for me lately sport, and that's a long time. People yeah. lose contracts over being gone that long, mm -hmm. okay? That's a long time. Mm -hmm. So you had what, tw 20 was COVID and 21 was stupidity, is that right? Yeah, pretty much. Got it, got it, pretty much. Yeah. So he's fresh, is what you're saying. 100%, <laughs> he is that, he is fresh. He is, he is not overrated. Rested. He is rested. Um, so 25 has not been set yet. It'll be announced in July. Uh, Kenya, Kenya and Japan? Tokyo. Yeah, Tokyo. those are the key, key bidders. Wait, those are the um, options. Man, well, are those the key bidders. There's more bids, but they are the top bids. Yes. They the are top the bids bidders. For Tokyo and Kenya? And Kenya. So yeah. Cole has gone on record that he wants it in Africa. Yeah. And well, Kenya is willing to step up. And do it. And I'm going to tell you, I will bet a large amount of money it's in Tokyo. Um, yes. Hey, man, look, it's Black History Month. <laughs> We're all for it, but no. Okay. That's rough. Look, here's the thing. Oh. Here's the thing. Look, first of all, first of all, you got a, rec you got a recency bias that he's forgetting about. The, the worlds were just in Qatar. Like it wasn't, that wasn't long ago, right? Yeah. Right. And 19. two, right. And two, Qatar and Kenya are really different places. Yeah, yeah, yeah. not not Kenya. <laughs> not Kenya. They're, they're really <laughs> different places. Yeah. Um, the coaches of Mr. Jacobs, who was born in El Paso, didn't know that. Um, yeah. Army uh, brat. Paolo Camasi. I'm not yeah. saying. Yes. And then Johnny Lombardi. Okay. Got it. Great job. So his, his coaches are 300% Italian. <laughs> yes. So. Great, great job to the Italian crew. Yes. So that was, that was fun to research. Um, switching gears completely. Completely. Because we, we need to <laughs> let some steam off of the regular chests. Rate, I won't be as hard to say, put them in order, but what are your top five? No, no, we put them, oh, no, we put them in order. Oh my gosh. Oh, please. Oh my gosh, that's been the, I, the fight on the- In game. order. Top that's five. That's the whole debate. That's the whole Twitter sphere. I know, in right? In order. Top five Super Bowl halftime shows. I'm not sure I can remember five Super Bowl halftime shows. <laughs> Yeah. Aerosmith, Jenna Jackson, Prince, yeah, yeah. Bruno Mars. Yeah. yeah. West Coast is, Connection. Is that your list too? Is that the no, list? No, I'm, I'm, I'm giving, I'm oh. throwing out the, the brain farts of the who, who are even five. Um, well, what I, you, I, what I, you got, Papa Petty? I mean, Korea, uh, the governor looked like he was ready, so he could go, but I can go first. It's not a problem. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Look. I struggled with number five. I'm not gonna lie. I struggled with five, not to remember five. Just I can't think that there were. I can't remember five that I gave a damn about. Right, five were not memorable. <laughs> so I'm just gonna go ahead and say Beyonce at five because I figured she deserves to be there somewhere. Okay, All right. She she's my five too. So go ahead. And she did it twice, if I'm not mistaken. So yes. Beyonce at five. Yes. Um, wait a minute. I'm, I'm about to mess up my list. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. 
Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Damn, I, no, you're right. I'm messing up my list. So I'm going to go ahead and say Beyonce at four and five. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. Okay. But no, I'm, I'm being serious. So the, the Beyonce with Kendrick, which I, um, I believe was the most recent one, um, I loved. I thought that one was great, if I'm remembering that accurately. Um, but for me, the, this this debate comes down to something really, really simple. Um, Michael Jackson is at three. The the West Coast, the, 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 the West Coast heroes, as I'm going to call them, are at two. And then way above all of that, is Purple Rain in the Rain by Prince. And it's not really a debate for me. And I, I listen, I'm a millennial. I'm at the start end of the millennial. I just turned 41. Right. I don't know what any of the people who I went to college with or high school with are talking about. Listen, Mary J was up there struggling. <laughs> 50 is not from the West Coast. And it was nice that he tried to hang upside down like the video. I get it. It was a very nice performance. It was West Coast epic. I get all of that. Snoop out there in his full length, Crip suit, Crip walking, Dre, M, taking the knee. All of that. It's phenomenal. I'm not hating on it. It was great to see hip hop on center stage. I loved it. But Prince is Prince. Yeah. Purple rain in the rain. If you are a believer of higher powers, God rained down rain on Prince. <laughs> oh, my gosh. While he was doing purple rain. So the man above anointed this conversation if that's your style of trained oh thought. It's not mine, but I'm going to go with it. Listen, oh Prince, one man on the stage with one instrument holding the whole thing down, authentically singing. I heard somebody say Prince was doing the lip sync. Sh shut up. No, no. Prince does not lip sync on stage. And they had the FAMU band backing him up. Everybody forgot about that part. Mm-hmm. The fam you band was on the side stage backing up Prince. It's Prince by a mile. I don't have nothing else to say. Would you like okay. me to go, Governor? Or would you like to go? I'll, I'll go ahead and go. Okay. Um, so again, this this is you're 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 digging into nostalgia, right? We're we're talking about this. This started in what eighty three? The first one was in was in eighty three. Right. Yeah, and. I mean, look, I cannot go back on Michael Jackson. I, I can't. I'm sorry, right? So I start with Michael Jackson at five, okay? I can say that I saw Michael Jackson perform at the halftime Super Bowl. Uh, number four, pure entertainment. I mean, unbelievable. I will go Bruno Mars at four. I will go Beyonce at three. Hip hop, Dr. Dre. Uh, I mean, I, I'm I still at, at, at this age, I was still just blown away at what I saw. Did we not witness Eminem take a knee? Did we not see that? Did we did we, did we not hear Dr. Dre say and then and a, still ain't got love for the police? Like or did what? <laughs> oh, he said it. And Kendrick had his line. Yes. They, yes, they, they hit the police pretty good time. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And number one, I mean, look, I I'm on the same same boat as Clyde. Um, Prince rules. Prince Prince destroyed that performance, and it will. I mean, until we see something even close. Uh, I will continue to put Prince up there as the standard, okay? And again, what are the odds that it would rain during Purple Rain? Are we- Oh my gosh. What? what? Like, come on. <sighs> like somebody seeded the clouds like right at that moment. Are we, are, what, what are we talking about here? <laughs> it's unbelievable. So those are my top five. Yeah. So that was that was epic, gentlemen. I appreciate both of both of your uh, your offerings. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna break it down like this. 
We have three categories. Category one, great performances. Beyonce at five, Bruno, Mar Bruno Mars at four. Both incredible concerts. The Lemonade Brigade was amazing. And Bruno Mars, Bruno Mars could do a Crest commercial and it would be, it would be happy. Yes. Right? Like this, like, you know, like in our in our house and in, in a car full of seven people, if we need the kids to shut the hell up and start arguing, we play Bruno Mars. Mm -hmm. The next category uh, are epic performances, yes, but historically relevant. I am not going to separate them. So I have a 2A and a 2B. The West Coast F the police that we just <laughs> saw. And I better have you naked by the end of this song. JT hey, and Janet hey, changed hey. the way wow. live wow. television sports are. Listen, there was never there was never a, a, a five second buffer on live sports before, mm -hmm. and there have never not been one since. There, there will be no. There will, I'm amending there will my list. <laughs> there, 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 will not be, moment, there will not be a moment in black history. history. Dare we say a moment in Black history? I mean, Listen, the, the things that stemmed from that incident. Mm -hmm. if, you, if you watch the Janet Jackson documentary that just mm -hmm. came out. Yes. Right? They give 35 minutes to that one thing because there was vitriol and people losing their minds after it. Yeah. And, and what I thought was wild is nobody came for Justin Timberlake. Right. Everybody came for Janet. Mm -hmm. She didn't expose her own nipple. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, I, I look, both of those two were historically significant and are worthy of praise. It's a tie for the silver. A, I'm a Prince fan. I get it. But you need to forget that I just said that <laughs> because B, B and C are what's relevant. C, that was the Super Bowl with two black head coaches. And I don't even remember the game very much because the Super Bowl halftime was the only time it downpoured like it did. The right guy on a ivory white gigantic piano singing one of the greatest songs ever done made people like me forget there was even a football game. But like when, when, the, when he was done, I was like, oh, wow, there's still a half of football. Yeah. Right. And, and again, I'm going to say again, it's the only time both head coaches in the Super Bowl were African-American and it is no, that is nowhere near anything but a footnote because everyone remembers the Super Bowl halftime show because Prince was ridiculous. Mm-hmm in the rain, singing purple rain, probably rode up in a, in a, in a, in a little red Corvette. He probably left with a raspberry beret on. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure he traveled around the world in a day. But anyway. Look, <laughs> that's, man. that's number one A period. P people, listen. I'm just gonna go ahead and take the time to, to, to if I, I haven't been petty all show, I'm gonna be petty now. Th this whole, I don't even know how we arrived at, in the world of which MJ and Prince are a thing. Prince is so far superior, it ain't even funny to me. The catalog is bigger and better. The level of skill as a musician is bigger and better. And just his swag. Prince is out there and doing Purple Rain. He got his hair wrapped up. He only unwrapped it to do the Purple Rain song. <laughs> okay? MJ is an awkward child molester. I don't even want to talk oh, about Prince versus MJ. There's nothing that MJ ever did in his career that is better than Prince match for match. And the Super Bowl damn sure wasn't one of those. But listen, I, I, I cannot jump on that bandwagon any harder or more aggressively or, or with any more 
stomping of my feet. The only thing MJ has ever, ever done that was better than Prince was the Thriller video. The first, the first long, again, it, it was relevant, right? And that's cool. I, Prince made a but, movie. I can't name three, I can't make, name three instruments that, that Michael Jackson played. I know Prince plays 19. Right. Like, I, I know it. I know that it took them almost four years to find a band good enough to play his music in concerts. Because when his music was recorded, he played all the instruments. Right. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right. So yeah, let's let's not do that. But yeah, Prince is definitely. I think we all agree, which never happens. The Prince halftime show was number one. But I, I have to amend my list. Lamar, Lamar educated me and reminded me of the Janet issue. Janet, so Janet and JT, list. man. I am amending my list. <laughs> Prince is one. Prince is one. West Coast is two. Janet and Tim, Timberlake, three. Bruno, four. Beyonce, Lemonade, five. All right. All right. So there you go. Look at there. Clyde and I have the same list. That never happened. Ever. Ever. When you're right, you're right, brother. That, you know what? <laughs> I'll take that. Thank you, sir. All right. Last group question of the evening. What's the best thing that you've learned from track and field? Oh, boy. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say mine. Okay. Please. That opportunity is opportunity. And if you, take the, if you don't take the opportunity, you may never get it again. Like literally, like you don't have to be the best, but if you get the opportunity, that can make you the best. Uh, that is, yes, uh, profound. I mean, absolutely. absolutely. Lamont Marcel Jacobs. Yes. Um, so I've, I've, I've thought about a million things. I mean, I, I can say that I'm truly one of the most blessed uh, track and field athletes ever, uh, more so on the longevity that I enjoyed um, to be able to stay somewhat relevant up until um, I was 35. And um, that just doesn't happen. It's just, you know, we, we, we talk about all the time. I mean, the average track career is somewhere between three and five years, if that. Um, but, uh, when, when I thought about what, you know, that the best thing that I've learned from track is, uh, communication. Um, I, you know, when, when, when you spend multiple summers traveling the world, seeing different countries, different meeting different personalities, different cultures, eating different food, um, you know, adjusting over and over time differences, all of these things. Um, the, the thing that sticks with me to this day is that I believe that there isn't anyone on this planet that I can have a conversation with and it doesn't matter whether you speak the language or not. And, you know, um, Lamar can, can attest to this. When you, when you get over there, you know, and, and before the, the internet um, age came, you had no choice but to communicate. You had no choice but to spend time in front of each other, you know, and, and talk. I mean, all the track meets over in Europe were six o'clock onwards, right? So you had, you know, God forbid you couldn't sleep, right? So you're up at five or 6 a.m. in the morning. You're literally up for 12 hours before you actually get to go do what you do, okay? You can't spend the whole time sleeping, right? You can't spend, you know, you, 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 you're trying to make sure your day goes as smooth as possible, breakfast, lunch, you know, dinner, et cetera, et cetera. But inside of that, you know, there is boredom, there is, you know, all sorts of thoughts are going through your head, 
you know, each day, that your emotions are going high. You know, you look out the window and it looks like it's about to storm and you're like, man, oh, you know, and, and you're going back and forth. But um, the camaraderie that we had with each other and, you know, some of my good friends over there still don't speak English, you know, <laughs> but when we see each other, I mean, big hugs, we're dapping each other up. And, and it's, it's something that I think that this generation is missing, right? Uh, and every chance that I get, you know, it, it's what I've realized as a coach is that a text message is not enough. A WhatsApp is not enough. You know, at some point you have to confront what it is that we're dealing with, right? And, and just having a conversation about it, man to man or, or man to female, like, let's, let's talk this out, you know, and, and knowing how to, to go around and, and figure out what buttons to push, all of those things are things that I learned uh, from track and field. You know, it's a very singular sport. It's a very, um, I mean, it's basically you against the world. So, you know, you, you better know how to, uh, how to communicate. So simple as it sounds, that's what I, that's what I appreciate the most. That's what I, that, that's what to this day, I'm glad that I learned uh, from my time as a professional athlete. That is a, uh... That's super duper well said, and it actually segues uh, smoothly into what I would love to share. Um, there's a lot of things I think that I've learned from track, um, but in, in playing the game fairly and, and honing it down to one, I would say this. I believe that resiliency is what I learned from track and field more than Ooh. anything mm. and i and i believe i learned from track and field that resiliency if you only have one skill if you have that one you are well healed to handle the battle against the world in general mm -hmm. if you are resilient <laughs> you can face anything you can think of and many things that you hadn't thought of. And if you're gonna have, uh, I don't think my career is quite as long as the governor's, but mine was 13 years. If you're gonna have a 13 year career in a sport where every year is a contract year, the one thing you learn early, often, and learn to pack first when you leave the house is, your resiliency. Um, and so if I, if I was going to share with anyone like, Hey, what can I get from being a track and field athlete? I would tell them without question, you will get resilience mm -hmm. because track has not come easy to any human being ever and success in track and field. And honestly, success in life, it doesn't ask for, it requires failure. Like you have to have failure to move forward. Yeah. yeah. And if you don't learn, if you don't have, you don't acquire the skill of resilience, you just get eaten alive. So that's, that's my gift to the conversation tonight. So awesome. either one awesome. of y'all should have went last on this one. <laughs> <laughs> um, but in the resiliency lane, when I, when I saw that this was the question, instantly two, for lack of a better word, quotables came to my brain. One of them mine, one of them uh, belonged to a very uh, close person in my life. The, the, the two things that I've learned above all in track is make history, not excuses. That is something that I put um, on the rings of our national championship team 
at Art U, our women's team, 2013 indoor and outdoor. And that was kind of our mantra for the year, but that's something I learned very early on as an athlete and as a coach, make history, not excuses. And to me, that, that falls right in line with the resiliency piece uh, that's, that Lamar was very more eloquently than I am <laughs> speaking to. The other, and maybe the most brutal, and still falls in that resiliency area for me is uh, physics doesn't give a fuck. <laughs> and it's literally, you know, one of uh, Miss Tiana Madison's lifelong slogans. Uh, I know Ralph Mann is, is very uh, high on, on that one as well. This game does not care what you're going through, what's going on in your life, mm -hmm. what, what problems you bring to the track every day with you. If you execute the physics, you will be rewarded with your performances. And so, you know, this sport, above all others, gives you an opportunity to be brilliant, no matter what the circumstances, if you can execute, if you can focus, if you can deliver under pressure. Under pressure. And it is, make no mistake about it, it is the most, at the top level, it is the most pressure packed sport there is. Ain't no team out there with you. Ain't nobody to throw the ball or pass the ball to. One man, one woman in your lane, in your circle, on your runway, and it's you against the world. And either you do or you don't. Mm -hmm. And you can't put it on anybody else but yourself. And, you know, if you are the type of person that can learn to train through and thrive in those type of moments, there's literally nothing that you can't accomplish in this world because you've done the hardest thing. Yeah. So those are my two, what the sport has ultimately taught me. Make history, not excuses, and physics doesn't give a fuck. Nice. I think those were all good gem pieces for everybody to take with them and uh, wrap up the discussion of the show, per se. Um, as if we weren't any into, into any ruckus already, let's start for rapid fire and get a little more ruckus -y. So, Lamar, uh, you're up, sir. All righty. You ready? I am. Okay. So, I don't think there's one that's track related. This is just, just like last week, just fun. So um, opposite of the question of last week, what is the most useful app on your phone? Oof. PG, sir, PG. Wow. <laughs> I'm uh, kidding. <laughs> that was much more about my reaction than you are. <laughs> it's all about me being immature and petty over here <laughs> you know i'm gonna be honest unfortunately the most useful app on my phone is the weather app mm. because i work outdoors like 340 of the 365 days of the year and it literally can frame my week it can frame like my next day it decides whether i'm gonna go on a trip to this place or that place so unfortunately, I, it probably is that. Got it. I don't think any of us disagree with that one. <laughs> I think we all feel the, the, the tension of that one. Um, if this was your last day, what is the first thing that you're going to do? If this was my last day, I would get all of my immediate family, loved ones, together in the same room, tell them it was going to be my last day and that I refused to not have fun. Got it. What TV character do you identify with the most? Wow. One? Yes. TV character. It could be a movie, whatever. Just, I guess, media character. Is that what you would call it? Oh. Hmm. Uh, 
Uh, probably. What's what's the movie where where Denzel? It's a remake, but Denzel's like a, he's not a vigilante, but he's like doing bad things to to bad people in the name of good people. Um, it's the Equalizer. Yes, Equalizer. Yes. Yes. yes, Equalizer. That's the movie, right? But I know there's a show called. But that's that's Denzel um, Washington's Equalizer. Yes. Yeah, yes. I would say, I would say probably either Denzel Washington's Equalizer or Idris Elba's character in uh, in The Wire, Stringer Bell. There you go. Like a person, right? Like I was always trying to like do good things like in the midst of like bad things. <laughs> All right. Starting your day off. Biscuits and gravy, an omelet or a fruit plate? Oof. Uh, probably the omelet. Got it. If, if I start my day off with biscuits and gravy, I'm going to take a nap. <laughs> I thought you were going to say something else. <laughs> Anyways, do you wordle or not? Nah? I think I'm going to make that question through everybody. So the funny part is I had no idea what wordle was until you asked that question last week. I was like, oh, I added the app. And now I've played it for a week. So I guess, yeah, it, it seems cool. Okay. What was your first job? Oh, that's an easy one. Um, it's a terrible job, too. Um, the, the, <laughs> the way commercials get um, screened uh, to find out whether they actually go, go national is somebody calls up... Uh, people's house well I don't know if it happens this way now but it used to cold calls to people's houses asking them if they wanted to go to the screening um to you know basically to help decide what, what kind of commercials were going to be on television <laughs> and you basically go to this place and get locked in a in a theater for like the better part of two hours watching commercials both good and bad um so it's a telemarketing job now it was my first job got it do mermaids lay eggs or have babies? <laughs> have babies. That's hilarious. I don't know. Uh, it, it, I told you. <laughs> They're mammals, I believe. So I think that's that for they you have to, babies. That's for you to interpret. I, I believe mammals have babies. No, I'm saying the, mer the mermaids. I mean, I'm not mammals. I, I believe mermaids have babies. So that's right. Okay, got it. So ask your friends. Start a Twitter poll. I don't know. Um, you survived, sir, from my questions. Gentlemen, oh my goodness. the line of fire oh. is for you. Oh, chew. How, how are we supposed to follow up mermaids right. laying eggs? Right. Do mermaids lay eggs or have babies? Wow. Uh, Governor, do you have a pressing question for me? <laughs> Um, so, okay. <laughs> so many places I could go with this. Oh my God. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. I'm going to, I'm just going to, I'm going to vanilla this. Um, favorite venue that you've competed in in your career uh... um. no no, it's a choice between like a couple. Um, I, I'm going to say my favorite venue uh, was my first world championships in Ulova Stadium in uh, Gothenburg, Sweden, which I think to this point is still the smallest venue to ever host a world championship. Yeah. yeah. Beautiful stadium, though. 
Beautiful. Absolutely. Story. Beautiful story. So, so first of all, absolutely beautiful, right? Second of all, like, let's be clear, world record in the triple jump on both oh. genders was set. Yep. <laughs> and I was standing like within like eight feet of the pit both times. So yeah. <laughs> but the, the stadium right. was awesome. The stadium was awesome. All right. So the Super Bowl is over. The NFL season has concluded. And just because this has to be on camera for so many reasons, <laughs> who are the top 10 quarterbacks in the NFL? Brady oh, yes. retired. Brady has retired. Big Ben has retired. And for the purposes of this question, Deshaun Watson don't count. I see. Well, let me let me see if I can find my list. Because you're gonna make me, you're gonna make me say this on camera. I don't want to mess up what, what my list was. I think I know it by heart, but I kind of want to make sure I got it. All right. Uh, Ten um, is Matthew Stafford. Um, nine. I think, yeah, nine is Dak Prescott. Um, eight is Lamar. Seven is the angry toddler. Um, <laughs> known Translate as Kyler for those Murray. Who don't speak you. Okay. <laughs> known as Kyler Murray. <laughs> Six is Russell Wilson. Um, five is Justin Herbert. Four is Joe Burr. Uh, that's Joe Burrow, people. Uh, three is... Uh, Josh Allen, who I absolutely love. Uh, two, I unfortunately have had some sort of like curly haired man crush on since he's been in the NFL, Patrick Mahomes. And one is, uh, it's real simple. Uh, go Bears. Love that dude. Love everything he's about except the anti-vaxxing. Um, Aaron Rodgers. Well, well done, sir. You got it all in. There you go. Got it. Well, to uh, wrap up the show with our new tradition for the month, we only have uh, one more show of it. Uh, we are highlighting people in Black history that are notable, that might not be as recognizable as the key players that we always hear about. Um, I found a fun one, and I don't know if fun's the operative word or not, but uh, her name is Zelda Wynn Valdez, and she is actually the She's a fashion, or she was a fashion designer. She passed in 2001, um, but she is the creator of the Playboy Bunny costumes. Oh, wow. So I thought that was pretty cool knowing like how vanilla those who represented those costumes were at one point to have something that didn't look like the other. So I thought that was very cool. She uh, did some other notable designing things, but most notably, the designer for the Playboy bunny costumes. I thought that was pretty cool. So um, when we started this, um, I wanted to make it a point uh, to highlight uh, famous moments or famous people of black history, but specifically females, um, because I don't believe that black women get enough attention, praise or credit for any of the things that they do. Um, and this one is, you know, I am a new parent, little baby boy, and children have the ability to change the world in ways that adults often forget and do not really qual quantify very well. So my highlight this time is Miss Ruby Bridges, who <sighs> is, who was, in 1960, the first black child to racially integrate an all white elementary school in the South. And of course, on her first day at what was William France Elementary School in Louisiana, 
she had to be escorted through by, you know, federal marshals and national guardsmen through a ridiculous mob of angry white people who saw a little black girl going into an all white school as the end of the world and the end of all things, you know, I can't, I can't imagine what that was like for her, but the amount of bravery that that took from a six-year-old is something that, you know, we could all do better to, to find that level of bravery within ourselves from time to time. Mm -hmm. uh, so to Miss Ruby Bridges, uh, thank you. And if you don't know that story, Google it. There are documentaries about it, read about it. She's amazing. And we are all better off for Miss Ruby Bridges. So I'm, I'm you know, I, I, I uh, every time, you know, I, I think about these, these things, um, one of the questions that I've been asked that I really haven't been able to, I haven't been able to, to, to bring this to fruition. Um, the question is, who would I most like to sit down and have a coffee with, or a cup of tea with? And for me, um, that person would be my namesake, uh, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. And so Kareem came to mind because a certain LeBron James just went ahead and broke his scoring record uh, back on Saturday. And, um, you know, so you, in order to, to, you know, when you talk about the future, you have to remember your past, right? And um, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, uh, was born Ferdinand Louis L. Cinder, Cinder Jr., uh, born in Harlem, New York. And he played 20, uh, 20 seasons in the NBA, played for two teams. He played for the Milwaukee Bucks and he played for the LA Lakers. Uh, Six-time MVP, 19-time All-Star, 15-time All-NBA. Um, most, in, in, in terms of you know, breaking out into the entertainment world. Um, one of the things he's most known for was he was actually in a Bruce Lee movie, Game of Death. Mm -hmm. um, and 2016, Barack Obama awarded him with the Presidential Medal, uh, Medal of Honor. Um, he has stayed relevant all of these years. Um, very much uh, opinionated when it comes to politics um, and is not afraid to make his uh, feelings known. And, um, you know, he will be remembered as one of the all time greats, um, if not the greatest uh, player. Um, I think anybody that, you know, when you, when you put your lists out, he's going to be in their top five for sure. Um, invented a scoring shot that was pretty much un indefensible, the, the sky hook. Um, and again, you know, I, I, I always feel like every now and then we have to remind uh, this generation of the greatness that came before them. Um, so yeah, if there's anyone out there that can make that, that happen, I would certainly appreciate it just to spend a couple of minutes with him and, and just, let his wisdom, you know, um, shower me. Um, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, um, one of the all-time greats. I go. That's, a, that's awesome. I mean, you know, you, you could add to Kareem's list. Uh, you know, he's one of the reasons that freshmen were, at the time, ineligible to play on, on the quote-unquote varsity in college because they did they were trying to stop UCLA from continuing said dynasty um and and two and I think this one is is the really big one like he's the reason that the dunk was outlawed yeah it's like what yeah no yeah, no yeah. dunking in college <laughs> which, which still is just the weirdest rule change and then unchanged like in the history of basketball but yeah. anyway uh Kareem's amazing 
Um, yeah. And, you know, Kareem's the greatest winner of all time and nobody ever, never, ever gives him credit for it. Like, he's the only guy to win a world title as a high schooler and as a collegian and as a, and as a pro. Unbelievable. Like, yeah. And I mean, yeah, that is what that is. Um, I too have a certain affinity for, for the females uh, in, in regards to trying to educate folks with this list. So tonight I'm going to give as briefly as I can a, a twofer, one female and one male. Um, the male, I'm almost certainly certain that most people have never heard of, uh, Frederick McKinley Jones. And Frederick McKinley Jones is the, the reason for my, uh, my namesake tonight, the inventor. Um, <laughs> the joke is, if you look him up, he invented everything. <laughs> but he, he has, I mean, he won a Congressional Inventors Award way back in the day. But, but the thing that he's probably most famous for that none of us really know, but we know, but when I tell you, you understand how important it is. It's uh, the portable refrigeration units that were adapted and then uh, installed in trucks to allow for uh, movement of perishable goods across the country. Mm. Um, that's relatively relevant to the advancement of this country. <laughs> just, a um, just a little. Uh, Frederick McKinley Jones. So look, look him up, folks. Uh, number two, and this one, I, I found this one uh, in educating myself. Marie Van Britten Brown. And she is, is credited with creating the closed circuit security system 60 years ago. So this is, a, this is like a huge precursor to the ring and uh, all those are the doorbell cams and all the mm -hmm. other things. But this was 60 years ago. Wow. Um, and, and invented by a female and a black female to boot. Um, and I thought that was amazing because, you know, if you, if you dig into the foundations of this country, a, an inordinate amount of initial inventions that have helped frame this country were created by by African Americans, um, many of which were later, uh, the narratives were rewritten and, and a Caucasian counterpart was more loudly given credit, right? And uh, it's very interesting. You know, like, you know, an African-American invented the stoplight. You know, and so I guess at the end of the day, what I, what I like about this exercise is, A, we get to pay homage to some people who, who look like me and, 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 and are, you know, our founding fathers and mothers, uh, you know, in this country who probably haven't gotten their due. But, but, but B, I think, which is was really awesome about it is like, it's a chance to help educate uh, our viewers and listeners on, on a topic that I think is interesting, right? Like Black History Month, if you embrace it, is a chance to do something most of us don't do very well when we get older, which is get smarter. You know? Oh. Unfortunately, I will warn, warn many of our viewers though, the more you dig into black history, especially as it pertains to inventions, many, many of the things that you were taught were, are gonna be unlearned and you're gonna have questions. And then you, you may become bitter with some of the people who, <laughs> who ram those things down your throat. Look, I'll give, a, I'll give a case in point, right? I'm originally from Brooklyn, New York. When I was a kid, when we went to school, I was taught in school that Columbus, Christopher Columbus discovered America. I was taught that. Right, like we all in 2022, we all know how ridiculous a statement that is. But I was literally taught that in school. So, like, those are the kind of things. Like, I mean, think about it. all of us learned that there were nine planets. There aren't. <laughs> yeah. Right, and so you, you got to be willing to 
accept the fact that some things that you've been force fed and that you take as rote knowledge are not actually true. Very true. Very true. Um, as we wrap up, uh, two marks that we didn't ignore, they just happened today. So um, I will bring them to light before we get ousted uh, per the comments or on Twitter or Facebook or whatnot. <laughs> um, uh, in the long jump, the women's long jump, Miss Yulamar Rojas actually jumped 681. So repeat in the long jump, not the triple jump. She jumped 681 today. Um, boards out there playing with people. People, right. I want I want people to understand if Rojas jumps 681, she's gonna jump 1650 <laughs> or further. I, I, look, write it down. I said it on the 17th of February. <laughs> right. And then um Jacob, and I can't I ever I always say it wrong. Ingebrigtsen, is that right? Yes, Ingebrigtsen. Yeah. Ingebrigtsen. Ingebrigtsen. Yes. Ran 330 today. Wow. Bruh. <laughs> what three so listen we were talking about the four by four yeah and three o's mm -hmm. and the women are at 320 28 ish you know right around there that's right he ran 330 and it was contested like he it was a race he didn't run there solo like it was a race uh he had to run um endure a race from samuel to Farah. If I say that wrong, I apologize. But yeah. So we didn't miss it. It just happened today. So if we weren't up on the meet today um, in France. So wowzers, wowzers. On that note, we will wrap up the show because there's some conferences, conference championships happening right now. Uh, like the governor, he's going to have one in a couple of days. Uh, a lot of conference championships are happening next week. Uh, we have the Arkansas last chance meet, or not last chance meet, what is it? The tune-up before conference uh, happening this weekend. Uh, we know what's being orchestrated there. And then we have more madness We may, after we that. may have some marks to talk about it from Texas Tech this weekend. Oh, and at Tech, yes. <laughs> I forgot about Tech. Um, so enjoy yourselves this weekend. And uh, we will definitely see each other next week. So everyone be safe, stay warm, and we'll talk soon. Bye, everyone. Thank you. When the lights come on, the road skip to running. When the mics come on, opponents smash the plumbing. Heard you like it warm, hot knife the butter. Truth pin them hard, knock them off that rebuttal. Tsunami, tidal wave to your puddle. Tough love punch you in the arms, little brothers. Athletics double, I'll see if there's no others. Track the field's pace and we'll peel to go further. Hey, Wiley, Coyote, it's road runners. Feels like you know us, you've been with us the whole summer. If not for this quarantine, these four corners wouldn't be here, but we're here, so start learning. You gotta earn your stripes, gotta get your scars. Show you how to fight, but show us who you are. You lack experience, but still you wanna talk. And who is that you're talking to? Your circle's kinda small. Heads prevail when the backbone's strong. Gotta keep it coming, no, it won't last long. Pass or fail, then sell the sad song. And if you don't check yourself, then that's wrong. Just trying to give you the real that you asked for. So why you keep cutting us off to ask more? We put it in slow mo, but you fast forward. Athletics, devil, I'll see the task force.